his computer. So appreciate uh, folks joining us. Uh, it's a, a different sort of uh, week this week. We're going to have a show and tell. Uh, appreciate everybody. I, I'm lo really looking forward to seeing what everybody else has out there themselves. Uh, I know some people have amazing collections of stuff. And to me, amazing can be not just in something that costs you a thousand bucks or is 16 feet tall or 30 feet wide. But I think one of the things that's important to me about World's Fair is for all the uh, uh, emotional tag that it, it, it has back to everything. So um, what I thought we'd do, wow, a whole bunch of people joining all at once. I'm just seeing all sorts of hot people pop in here. Welcome. So what I thought I'd do is uh, give people a chance for say five minutes or so to go through the highlights of their collection. Uh, you know, some people could keep what's going for, uh, for basically a week. I mean, they have astonishing amounts of stuff. Uh, but this way, if we do five minutes or so, and then when uh, we get around, to, we have time left at the end, we can loop around and you can show us through your next batch of it or, or whatever. Um, and that way, you know, everybody gets a chance because again, the thing that's most important to somebody is probably not important to others. But I'll start, and uh, it, it's funny, I joke about having the picture behind me of Readers of the Lost Ark. I have my garage, I have a three car garage, and I'm lucky I can get my bicycles in there. Uh, I have a storage locker. My office here just is, 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 is crazy, but I went and uh, d dug out something in the garage, which uh, it's a very, very beat up box. And for people that are from New York, uh, you might get a kick out of it. It's an Abraham and Strauss shirt box. And uh, I don't know how well it shows on the camera here, but it's got tape on it. And it's written uh, World's Fair 1964-65. And uh, hang on, I'm just gonna throw, what I'm gonna do here is throw folks on mute. And then that way uh, we keep the background noise down a bit. When you wanna chat again, you can uh, push the, uh, the space bar. I haven't gone through this box a lot lately, but I, I was going through it this morning and I found uh, this booklet here from the, uh, uh, let me turn off the virtual background. You can see just how much junk is behind me, but uh, this way things won't uh, disappear. So let's see, choose virtual background, none. Okay, so that, yep, there's some of the junk in my office. But this booklet here came from the uh, 1958 Expo 58. And I had an aunt that went to, uh, she traveled a lot and she went to Expo 58, came back. She went to Expo, uh, the 60, 62 Seattle World's Fair. And she started talking about World's Fairs when the 64 Fair came by. And I was just fascinated by the concept that you would build these things, uh, run them for a year, two years, and then tear them all down. So uh, she ended up giving me uh, her, her stuff from World's Fair. So this was my very first World's Fair item. But in this box, I have just all sorts of absolute junk that I was very industrious as a 12 year old uh, trying to record things. Uh, it's stuck to a three by five card. So I kept track of what I got, where I got it. So I, I guess I was a mobile driver. Uh, oh wow, my 52 year old glue just came loose from my Florida Pavilion uh, uh, porpoise decal. But again, stuff that was just so really stupid at the time, like, um, this here is a bunch of stuff we all take for granted today. It's a uh, national cash register receipts. And this was the whole thing of carbonless paper. And I was very proud that I, I wrote there back. And my handwriting has gotten even worse since then, but I've written on it that it was from, you know, NCR paper from the World's Fair. And it was just fascinating, you know, wow, no more carbon paper, micro encapsulated inks. And it's astonishing that it still smells like it did back in 1964. So all sorts of other things. I went to the Japan Pavilion. They had, uh, and that's where I was getting interested in computers. They had uh, pictures you could print out on uh, a big computer printer. You could get President Johnson, uh, Lincoln, all done with that sort of thing. I had all sorts of newspaper clippings about the building of the fair, the tearing down of the fair. Lots and lots of Ford Pavilion uh, things, again, stuck to cards. And as I've mentioned before, because I was a Boy Scout, I was honest. Oh, I wasn't as honest as I thought. One of these actually says New Jersey. I'm gonna have to give that back. Um, all sorts of things. Stuff again, that's just so crazy. You think, wow, where did I get this? This is, um, let's see. How many people remember teletypes, right? 
So I have here a piece of teletype paper, Bell System Exhibit, 1964, you know, New York World's Fair. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen a teletype in years, but I've got my, oh, let's see, my VIP badges, which people probably know they came in several versions, the real thick ones and the real thin ones. I can't see what it's holding up too much. Um, I turn the light off and see. I don't know. Let's see how dark. Does things show any better? Okay, yeah, we'll try that. So I wanted to be a real VIP, so I got myself a whole bunch of these things, and I could dig through this bag. Oh boy, I must have gone to Chrysler more than I thought. I have so many of these Chrysler badges, but I've got a billion brochures, book. You know, I I, I need to go back through this box because again, it's all this. What makes this box special to me is the um, this was all the stuff I got in 1964 and 65. It's not all the stuff I've bought on eBay since then or at swap meets or any of these other things. This was the stuff that was uh, crazy to me in 1964. And then uh, I've joked with people about, you know, having things that are absolutely valueless but are important. And this is one, hopefully this shows up. Let's say thing about textiles in Egypt and there's a, a bunch of cotton hanging on it. And I tell people this was something that really brings back a memory for me because I was not allowed to go to the fair the last day. My parents had been at the 39 fair and they knew it had become total anarchy the last day, but I was allowed to go the last week. And I was at the Egyptian pavilion talking to a young woman who worked there. And she was not at all happy about going back home, uh, saying how differently they were treating women back in Egypt uh, as opposed to the United States. And I was saying I didn't know if I'd ever get to Egypt and, you know, I was sorry she was going back to uh, that sort of environment. And she kind of impulsively reached over to one of the displays about cotton, pulled off this chunk of cotton and gave it to me and said, I hope you'll never forget, you know, you know, us at the World's Fair. And, you know, you wonder whatever became of the person, where they went to and, and what happened. So, like I said, it's an absolutely still soft 52 whatever 54 years later 56 years whatever it is now uh but it was uh just amazing you know like i said little thing there then i have one other world's fair thing i just need to pull up something here to share my screen and let's see share screen and uh where do we go here um uh, here's my best souvenir of all I went to the World's Fair, led me to Disney, met Carol at Disney. So every day when I look across the, uh, the dining room table, I've got a great memory of the, uh, the World's Fair. So, and she has been uh, absolutely wonderful in letting me collect all the crap that's all over the place behind me. So again, to me, that's what made the, the World's Fair special to me, this little box of absolute junk that probably, I don't know, maybe I could get a hundred bucks total for it on eBay, but it was all the stuff that, uh, you know, oh, wow, I have a beer toaster. I can maybe have a beer this afternoon and put it, I can't put a beer on top of that. Anyway, that's my box of World's Fair stuff. I, I could go, I have crates and crates and crates, but this box was real special to me and it's the, the memories in the box. So what I thought we'd do is uh, there's a feature in um, uh, Zoom that you can raise your hand if people uh, know how to use that, or if you wave, we can figure out, uh, you know, uh, a way to go around the room. So, uh, okay. Hi, Albert. I see Albert waving. Oh, Albert, we could go for a month on Albert's collection. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Uh, I know Kenneth was one of the early arrivals. So do you, <clears throat> you want to jump over to you, Kenneth, and if you show some of your things? Okay, I can uh, do that and I'll be relatively quick here. I'm going to try to flip the camera in use on the phone to the front facing one. It's resisting at the moment, but okay, there we go. Uh, so just a couple of quick things first, um, and then I'll show you my uh, central display for the fair. But here you see, uh, if you look close, this is a metal print of a photo I took at Magic Kingdom outside the Carousel of Progress that commemorates um, the carousel. And you see it talks about that, and there's some fine print down below that gives the story of it. But I have that hanging on my wall now, so it gets into the background of some of my, my Zoom uh, meetings just for fun. I have here something that probably a lot of people have in this group, the official guides 
to the 1964 season and the 1965 season. And the left-hand one is an interesting story. It's when I got through a third party on Amazon, and it turns out to have been a copy that it was in the St. Louis Public Library, apparently accessed, and somebody grabbed it and, and sold it as a used book. Um, and then I have a souvenir map, which is glorious when you're walking around the park, uh, Flushing Meadows Corona Park, to try to match up where everything was as you're there. Um, and then before we go back to the 64 fair again in my main display, there's two just oddball things that people have given me over the years. There's this deck of cards from the 1982 World's Fair. Um, anybody has any stories about that? Or this little goodie here, which is a gold key from the Chicago 1934 fair. And I really know very little about either of them. Um, but, you know, when people give me World's Fair stuff, I just grab them and uh, you know, add them in. But my main thing that I want to show you, of course, is my little central display here of uh, artifacts from the fair, the centerpiece of which is the model of the Ford exhibit that Rob Bianco made. And you can see there how gloriously detailed it is. You can even see the cars moving up through that um, uh, the tunnel that goes around the outside of the round part of the building and into the main exhibit area and then you have the cars and the light posts and everything even the displays at the front that show the um uh, car models on display so that's a relatively new addition there's uh some tickets here from the world's fair an adult ticket and a child ticket on display as well i have here in terms of originals like you were talking about actually from the fair when i was there the triumph of man record which i know is very common uh, and then an original Whammo Frisbee that I acquired on exiting. Um, and Bill and I over the years have tried to figure out where this Whammo demonstration area is. I think we concluded it was probably in the Better Living Center. But if anybody else knows where it was to or can confirm that would be great. A couple of years ago in 2014 on the 50th anniversary, I went to a Disney fan club event, D23 uh, is the name of the fan club, down at Disney World where they bought in speakers like Bill to talk about uh, Disney's connection to the World's Fair, and that was a really cool event uh, by far. And then I've got a couple of other random pieces here. A lot of this stuff on the left side is related to the New York State Pavilion and the uh, Mitch uh, Silverstein um, and Stephanie's uh, paint crew that have worked on getting the lower levels of the New York State Pavilion painted and some uh, little pieces of it or memorabilia from that. Uh, as a little benefits or supporting that effort. So I think that's the main things that I wanted to show here. I, I think I'll just pull this out very quickly and show you my Disney shelf as well, since a lot of you folks are also Disney fans, but these are things to go into for into detail some other time perhaps. Um, so I think I'll leave it there to leave time for other folks. Um, Bill, if anybody has any questions, we can do that now or later. Yeah, uh, as anybody is showing their stuff, if other people have a comment or a question or anything, jump in so you don't have to remember 36 people later at the at the end of it. So uh, I just think, you know, again, it's a, it's amazing all the various stuff that we all have. And thanks, Kenneth, for showing us some of yours. And, and the thanks for giving thing, the opportunity. That was, boy, that was a bunch of years ago. It was fun. That's where I first met Kenneth. And uh, it's, uh, again, great ways you make connections in these things. Uh, uh, Michelle had a good uh, suggestion here, if you're not looking at the chat, that uh, if you switch your view to speaker view, uh, you'll get a much bigger uh, view of what everybody is showing. So um, again, speaker view uh, up on the browser is up on the top right hand corner of the screen. I don't know where it is on the iPads or Androids or anything else, but uh, great suggestion. So who, uh, who else is waving that would like to, to go next? Uh, how about uh, Sandra on iPad? I'll unmute you. Hi. Hi. Right there. Um, I don't have an awful lot. Um, I'm downsizing now, so I'm desperately looking for things that I know I have somewhere. But I did come across just this morning this license plate. So that's very dear to me. And I also last week came across my embroidered hat anyone could see but I do have a question because 
Um, my husband's first job when he was 17 years old was sweeping the floors at night after the fair closed. And I came across a Western Union telegram um, addressed to him, advising him to report to the fairgrounds 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning for possible employment. And this is so, my husband's gone now, 10 years, but this is so dear to me. Uh, someone suggested I reach out to the Queens Museum to see if they had any interest in displaying the telegram, which I would be thrilled to have him, his name, in a museum, but they never got back to me. So if anyone has any suggestions, I would love to hear them. And that's all I got. Yeah, my guess is with the pandemic, things are probably yeah. uh, taking longer than, than uh, usual. But um, the Queens Museum, uh, uh, Albert has a lot of his stuff that uh, they've had at the museum. <clears throat> Excuse me. At times in the past, they tend to get things and then put it in the box like, you know, I had in the picture behind me before. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in my throat. And that's one of the concerns I have about anything of where I'd give or donate anything that I have to get rid of is that I don't want it to end up just in a box someplace. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that with us. And then Carol, Thank you. Carol with an E, you were waving. Yeah, hang on a second. Let me take you off of mute. Oh, actually, you muted yourself, so you need to push your space bar or unmute yourself on your end. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Bill, this is terrific what you do. Um, Bill knows about this. I took a picture and sent it to him a few years ago. My dad was a, a chemical salesman on Long Island for 50 years. People used to give him a lot of things. He probably told me what this was at the time. This is 32 feet long, I believe. You see it from Woolworths? Can everybody see it? It's Go back a little. It is a banner. It's a pennant. It has orange and blue pennants and this sign and I hate to say this but about a year and a half ago somebody told me what it probably is and I cannot remember what he or she said I called the Woolworths Foundation I called a bunch of people but this was hanging somewhere in Flushing to advertise the fair it could have been in Woolworths it could have been they didn't know that there is a Woolworths Foundation or something but this is hanging in my basement with all the other things that are from the fair and um, it's an amazing piece and it's probably unique. There probably is no other one like it. But someday I will try to remember where I stashed the paper that I wrote what it's about. Crazy that I don't have it. But um, I try to bring things that might be a little different. I got a pen pal. Her name was Claire. I used to remember her last name. And she wrote to me. We used to stand online and wait for pen pals. She was from England. We wrote for a while and we lost touch and then we had the harrises um from Tur from uh, quebec and they were great they were twins and they were waiting online and we decided to be pen pals and this is one of the funniest things she drew pictures of her family for me to remember what they looked like and she wrote my mom actually looks older than that in real life she she wrote that next to her mom and um this is kind of interesting it's a, it's a silly little personal story. This was in a souvenir bag. We were walking around the fair and saw our old neighbors from the Bronx. We moved away from them uh, three years before. My parents lost touch. The mom had that and my mother fell in love with it. And Harriet said to my mother, Bernice, it was $3, we're going back, buy it from me. And I'll get another one, this beautiful little thing from uh, one of the pavilions. And um, we never heard from the family again. And my mother thinks it was actually $30 and Harriet made a mistake. My mother insisted on that for, for her life. And then I have um, what's free at the fair. That's a great little booklet. And um, you know, I have the record but uh, I have about 20 trays, glass ashtrays, 20 trays. We hang them in the basement next to those. Uh, actually, some of them I, I had doubles of and I gave them away. But the little trays and also the Atomium in, uh, in um, Brussels. I went not, oh wait, that's the wrong one. The Atomium, has anybody ever been there to the Atomium? 
You did. Yes, I, I've Great. been there, and it's 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 wonderful. It's really gorgeous. It's amazing, right? And they had a, an exhibit of um, Versailles de Rix and some other comic characters when I went, but I only went like about fifteen years ago. This is still up. This is their their uh, you know what do you call it? Their their mascot. Themes. Yeah, their theme structure. Yeah. That uh, that actually gives me hope for us refurbishing the New York State Pavilion because that Antomium was uh, kind of a mess when I saw it back uh, maybe 20 years ago oh. and they did a really really good refurbishment of it. They did and this is another tray and of course I have the record but I'm going to show this again. If anybody wants to, if anybody has any idea what this may be because the person that told me wasn't quite sure that I do remember and like I said it's a pennant and I could send you more pictures Pull away from the camera a bit. It's hard to you focus. Bet. Is that better? Yes, thanks. Is that better? Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, great. I We would love to know. And, you know, I feel bad. I never really sat down with my dad and said, what exactly is that? But he used to uh, sell to a lot of antique stores, vintage stores, restaurants, everything. I have no idea where he got it, but it's quite amazing. And I do think it is uh, only one of a kind. And it spans the whole downstairs, a whole wall, but I folded it underneath itself. And uh, that's basically what I have, you know. Um, Great. Well, th th thank you. I don't want to cut you short, but again, we've got a. a yeah. No, I, I don't have anything. You know, the rest is what everybody else has. Great. Okay. Uh... Oh, let me mute that. Can't hear you, Bill. You know, it says no, uh, it says here, hold your space bar to unmute yourself. And I'm sitting here talking and, you know, <laughs> I'm holding my space bar. So I had just uh, muted myself so the background noise here doesn't interrupt. So uh, we have somebody that's billing themselves as Linda, but it's not Linda. So uh, why don't you jump in and tell us okay. uh, who you are and what you got? Well, this is actually Steve Crockett. I'm using my, my wife's computer. Okay. But uh, the first thing I wanted to show was this is my pennant from the New York State Pavilion that I got when I was... The, when I was five years old, um, I learned by riding on the elevator on the way up to the top of the observation tower that I was afraid of heights because I was the last one into the elevator and I was smack dab against the glass door. And when we got let off at the top, I ran out real fast. And when I got to the railing, I saw that it was glass bottom and I thought I was going to fall off. And I screamed and ran back to the, the center of the, the, uh, the building because I was deathly afraid of heights. Um, the second thing that I have is this may look like a normal uh, World's Fair guide, but if you turn around the back of it, you notice that the ad is not the right ad on the back because this is a prototype of the 1964 World's Fair guide that I got from John Pender. Now he told me that his dad had two copies. He sold one, which is the one I have, and it actually is about there's about 50 pages of content that constantly repeats. Now, I don't want to open it too far because I don't want to, you know, bust the binding. You know, I don't want to break the binding. But this is probably the rarest thing that I have. Can you, you know. show that a little closer, the back? Yeah. What's on there? Oh, the ad on the back? This is the ad on the back. What is, what is that? It is an ad for Coke, and it's dated 1963. And it's like I said, it's definitely not the, the Coke ad that should that would appear on, on the regular, you know, 64 right. edition. That's really neat. Yeah, I was very lucky and very happy to have that. When I when I saw, you know, he was selling that, I thought, I'll never win this. I'll never win this at all. It'll go super high and I'll get out bid. And when I won it, I was totally shocked. I was very happy. Um, the next thing I want to show was about um, 10 years ago. I This is what I call my holy grail. This is one of the trailblazer signs that, you know, were around the fairgrounds, you know, through, you know, along the highways. You probably can't see it. It's kind of far, but here, we'll do it sideways like this. But it's in very good condition. I, I called this the Holy Grail because when I started to get back into collecting back about in the early 2000s, I said, you know, I'd seen these on sale for eBay and they were going for like $1,200, $1,400. And I said, I'll never be able to afford that. And one day on eBay, I bought some ashtrays from a woman 
and she lived like about a half hour from me. And she says, I have some other things. If you want to pick it up at my house, you're welcome to it. And you can take a look at the other things I had. And I remember riding up with my wife to the, the woman's house. And I said, you know, my holy grail is the, the World's Fair trail, Trailblazer. So I wonder if she'll have one. And when she pulled up the, the, the garage door, there it was sitting in the, the, the garage right there in the front. I walked right over there and I said, how much do you want for this? And she says, well, how much can you offer me? And I said, and I wasn't working at the time. And I said, well, I can give you 50 bucks. And she says, okay. And I immediately walked it out to my car. I said, it's sold. Because I knew I'd never be able to find one again. And those are the probably the rarest things that I have in my collection. I'm very much into paper. And I have a ton of paper stuff downstairs. You know, and I have a big trunk full of stuff. And, you know, that's just too much to bring up. But um, I love the 64 stuff. It had a big effect on me. That's where I found out. I, that's why I fell in love with dinosaurs as a kid. Um, and, you know, I go back to the park probably once or twice a year just to walk around. And I guess that's pretty much it. Well, thanks. And, you know, it's interesting to hear you uh, mention where you got the things from. For a show of hands, how many people have gotten things from the Penders over the years? Oh, hello. A ton of stuff from him. He's been great. Yeah, uh, for folks that don't know it, uh, you know, John Pender down in Florida, his father had worked at the World's Fair, and he just had this habit of every time they were throwing stuff away, he said, can I have that? And uh, it just had an amazing amount of stuff. I mean, just, you know, uh, incredible amounts of stuff. And, you know, as John has been selling, selling off his dad's collection for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, thank God he t took home as much of the stuff that he oh. has. Uh, mm -hmm. Just totally phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Steve. Who else is waving a hand? How about Don Ballard? Don Ballard, come on down. All right, Bill. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't you doing something on the GGIE? Uh, well, don't get, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the next book that I'm working on. So. Okay. So... I have, can you see this? Yes. Do you have this? Yeah, I do. Uh, that's, is that the 39 or the 41? The 39. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, this is what I was going to send you in the mail. Now I don't have to. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it's, an, it's a neat thing and it has this, this is the only thing. I have a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm only going to show this one thing. And it has this neat fold out map, color map. Of uh, uh, that's in color. I don't know if people can see that, but it has that color map. Can you see that? No, the virtual background is kind of taking oh, okay. it. That's why I had to turn mine off. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that virtual background is Jack Rather's conference room. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, well, that's what I was going to send you in the mail. So I guess I don't have to send that anymore. But anyway. That's it. That's the, the, it's probably cutting it all out, but that's, that's, that's what I got. And I've got a couple other things from the Seattle World's Fair, but that's it. But I wanted to send you this, hopefully, hope, hoping that you didn't have it, but I should have known better. <laughs> thanks. Great. Thanks, Don. <laughs> okay. Go back to gallery view. Who else is uh, waving? Oh, Scott. Well, afternoon, everyone. I only have a couple of things. Ken showed the official guides from 64, 65, and uh, disclaimer, these are all my wife's things. She's the collector. Uh, but a question I had is, one of the things she has are these playing cards. Uh, if you guys can see, the uh, Congress playing cards. She said she got them at the World's Fair, but there's no markings. I was wondering if anyone knew anything about that. Can't see too much. It's a little blurry. Uh, what do the cards look like inside the box? Uh, give me a minute. I will uh, want to be very careful with this. Uh, there are tree scenes like that. Not 100% sure they're World's Fair related. Yeah, just looking at the cards or the box, my guess is it's earlier than 64. Yeah. The other thing she has is, oh, sorry, this World's Fair Pictures. 
And these are postcards you fill out and mail to people. Basically, stick a stamp, write a story, send it off that you were at the World's Fair. And from the Century of Progress, they're playing cards, which uh, I don't know why my wife was so much into playing cards. My, it was my mother who was the poker player. But uh, that's basically that along with the two guidebooks that Ken's already shown. So there you go. Great, thanks. Oh, well, but I know. It's, it's fun to see again, you know, the, to me, a wad of cotton to somebody else, a deck of playing cards. It's all the memories or, you know, the treasures. Who else? Absolutely. Albert. Albert's waving from his iPad. Let me, uh, you need to unmute yourself, Albert. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Wow. So uh, I'm here, uh, Bill, you know this area of my home, upper landing. Uh, uh, this, this area right here is devoted basically to the 39 New York Fair. I probably have, as Bill knows, uh, maybe about 2,000 items from 39, 62, and 64. But I have a few things that are really very unique and one of a kind. So I thought I would focus on those. And everybody, this is, I'll start with 1939. Everybody knows the, uh, the cano seat that, you know, is like a walking cane and it folds open so that you can sit on it while you're visiting the fair. Well, there was a guy named Joseph Jakowitz who had the, uh, an umbrella stand uh, just outside of Billy Rose's Aquacade at the fair. And his hobby was collecting autographs from people. And so he took one of these cane seats and he took the, uh, the decal off of it, but he, this is it. He had everybody famous that came by autograph it for him. And I have a, uh, an article here from the New York Daily News uh, about the, uh, the item and about him. And here, if you can see, I'll try and point out, um, here's uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen's autograph. Uh, here's uh, Eddie Cantor. Um, here's uh, Grover Whalen uh, on the back. There's uh, more autographs in the back here. Uh, probably the most famous of them is right down here, if you can see it, J. Edgar Hoover. Um, but it has autographs by Billy Rose, Gracie Allen, uh, Eleanor Holm from, uh, uh, from the uh, Aquacade, uh, Rudy Valley, Bert Wheeler, Eddie Cantor, Alfred E. Smith, who was a presidential candidate, Abbott and Costello, George Jessel, um, uh, Morton Downey, the, uh, the band leader, Sophie Tucker, Conrad Nagel. So it's, uh, I, I have this little piece that just points out each of the, uh, the autographs where they are on the front and on the back. So that's a really unique one of a kind item from the 39th there. And another one that I, that I have that is really quite lovely. And this is one of a kind too, in this little box. When you open it up, this is a one of a kind custom made ebony, gold and diamond ring. And you can see the uh, Trilon and Perisphere in gold, 1939, and right above the uh, Trilon is a, uh, a small diamond, and it's um, it's a lovely little ring. I know no history about it. Uh, I got it from a uh, a jeweler who had it, and he knew that I collected, and uh, so he offered to sell it to me at I'm sure a much more exorbitant price than it was really worth. But it was so unique, I just had to get it. So that's, uh, that's from 39. 
Now we'll jump to the 1962 fair, which many of you know I was head of TV and movies uh, for that fair. This is uh, my ID card from 1962. And this was my business card. I was head of television and movies uh, for the fair. And I was one of the very first people to ride the monorail uh, at uh, the 62 fair before it opened. And so Alwig Monorail, the company that made that monorail, presented me with this inaugural passenger award. So that's also a, a unique one of a kind item. I have plenty of, of other things from that fair, but for the sake of time, I want to jump, jump on now to the 64 fair. Uh, I was also head of TV and movies for that fair. This was my ID card from uh, the 64 fair and on the back you can see my picture a lot, uh, a lot younger and a lot different. Uh, hey, real uh, quick, real quick to interrupt you for a second, Albert. On the ID cards, did they have any sort of magnetic stripe or anything? Uh, they put through a reader when you went into the fair because uh, yes. they say something about keep this end up. You know, there's an right. arrow on it. Yeah, that's that's what this is for. And there is a, an embedded stripe in here. Uh, and then they somebody did counterfeits on these probably about uh, maybe three months or so into the fair. And so they modified it and all the uh, people that worked at the fair had to get their card stamped with this embossment cut through it. And it says WF for World's Fair. Yeah, thanks. We weren't sure if that had a reader or not, but we figured it must have been something because yeah, of there was years. the turnstile. You'd stick it in, and it would read and let you through. Great, thank you. Uh, and this was uh, an ID card that I wore when I would uh, go around the, the grounds with television crews and uh, and people that I was escorting on tours at the fair. And. You probably, a lot of you have seen the, uh, the bronze medallions that Medallic Art Company sold at the fair. They also sold a solid silver medallion uh, to the general public. But there were also these silver medallions that were presented by the fair corporation to VIPs. And this particular one here was presented, if you can see there, to the, uh, was it say the, uh, the president of the borough of Queens, that was his. And so they, there were, I don't know, maybe a thousand or, or more of, of these that were made to give out to, uh, to VIPs, but the rarest of the lot, and I think there were less than a hundred maybe made, was made out of solid gold and it looked like this. And they were given to, I, I know there were four of them given to presidents. Uh, President Kennedy got one before the fair opened, <clears throat> and, and of course before his assassination. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, Harry Truman, and Lyndon Johnson. Uh, and they gave them to heads of state, like uh, Indira Gandhi when she visited, and people like that. Uh, but. This particular one, which is really prized, this was the personal one for Robert Moses, the president of the fair. And this was on his desk. And I have a photograph uh, of him at his desk with this in the background. Wow. And this I got from Ernestine Haig, who was the private secretary to Robert Moses. And after the fair, actually, she married him. And after he passed away, I, I obtained this from her. Um, so those are just a few of the things. I mean, around me, I've got these cabinets here. Uh, I've got a, a wall of them. And all of these are uh, all lit up with different uh, uh, items. This whole cabinet display here is just from 1939. Uh, Here's real fast, and then I'll let someone else get on. 
this is one of my favorite little what's it kind of things. If anyone can figure out what this little egg is with a fly on top of it. Anybody want to guess? Well, Lost me. <laughs> it, it's a really unusual souvenir. If you grab the fly and pull it up, it's a measuring tape. And it's all spring operated, so it goes right back into it. Why? Yeah. yeah, you have to wonder. Did somebody have a box of flies and eggs they were trying to do something with? Or <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I, I have the box for it, and it says uh, here's the uh, paper in it. I can get it out. It's called the egg novelty. <laughs> Stop. Well, thanks. Tape. thanks much. That's uh, again. If anybody uh, has ever got a chance, that's just as upstairs hallway. Downstairs, the Smithsonian has dibs on it. I think. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Albert. Really appreciate sure. it. And who else? Uh, John McGregor. Let's see here. Hang on a second. You got to unmute you. You have to unmute yourself or hold your space bar. Is that better? Yes, there you go. Hi, Bill. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. It's 3 a.m. in the morning, or about half past three in the morning where I am now, Sunday, 31st of May, from the other side of the Pacific. Um, I'm just a bit south of the capital of Queensland, Brisbane on the Gold Coast. Um, I worked at... I, I didn't have anything at the moment from 64, 65, but my collection is a lot more recent. I started off with Expo 88 in Brisbane and then Expo 92 in Spain and Expo 93 in South Korea. Um, I'll start off, I might have to take this um, virtual background off. Uh, just a second. Right, okay, well, there were a few, I have a little, I don't have many, many things left from my collection when I moved house. I donated most of it to the Museum of Brisbane, but I do have a collection of little tiny pins that says World Expo 88. Um, that's the um, one of the logos. There were two logos. This one is called the Sun Sails logo because there are all these huge tarpaulin sun sails over the Expo site to protect it from the sun during the winter months. Um, this is the other logo um, from the 1988 World's Fair. It's like a boomerang X um, PO88, World Expo 88. And that's the same as the cap that I've got here. Does anybody want to make a guess how, to do how much this cap cost? Nope. Give it a... Yeah, that would be beyond my guess. A dollar fifty. Uh, well, <laughs> it was sitting on eBay for about 50 US dollars for a long time. And I thought I'd really like that. And it's actually an American collector. Um, but uh, I'm, after a few months, I thought I really do want it. And I was managed to bring the cost down to $20 US. But postage was also $20 US. <laughs> um, here's, here's another um, pin. This is like an official's pin. You've got the Boomerang X for Expo again with the PO. It's like a little, this would have been like an official's pin. Um, I have another little, um, that's, that's that logo again, um, on another little, another little pin. Um, and, um, I've got a little furry toy here. He's got the Expo 88 logo on the side. This is, um, Expo was platypus, duckbill platypus. He was the mascot for Expo 88. Very nice furry creature. And he was actually designed by Disney Imagineering's division. So um, he, he was um, launched in 1983. He went on tours all around Australia and overseas, promoting the expo. Much loved, much loved. Um, and um, there was a lady earlier who showed us one of her registered car, car number plates. Um, this isn't a real uh, registration plate, but it's just a souvenir one. But nonetheless, these things like go for $100, $150 on eBay. Um, and they're quite collectible. Um, you don't see them every day. So it's Expo 88 Queensland. 
Um, and I've also got the official guidebook. Here we are, World Expo 88. That's the scene of the monorail and the night parade. Um, all the pavilions, there are, there are about 50 pavilions all together. And this also comes with a, um, a map of the expo site by the Brisbane River here. Here's a, uh, uh, another souvenir book, Expo Excitement. That's a photo of the river stage where they had National Day ceremonies and music and things like that. And there was a huge globe, a uh, white earth globe on top. Um, which was very impressive during the day and night. And um, that about wraps up my Expo 88 collection, but um, I do have a few things from another. Is there anybody here who went to Expo 92 in Seville? This is a, um, like a key ring from the logo from um, Expo 92 Seville. It's like a, an orange globe, Seville as an orange, Seville, Seville. Seville's very famous for its oranges, so. They chose that orange globe logo for the um, of an interconnected world for their um, expo, and um, and this here I've had for twenty eight years. Um, this is actually also from Expo ninety two Seville, and it's a model of the very famous monastery on the expo site, which became the Royal Pavilion at Seville. Um, yeah, so apparently it was in this monastery that um, Christopher Columbus found, oh, Christopher Columbus did a lot of his research for his trip to um, the Indies or America as it was. And that's around about it. But to finish, to cap it all, cap it all off, I have two beer, World Expo 88 beer, beer, beer can holders, which I also got from eBay. Keeps your Coca-Cola very cool as well if you're not into beer. Um, but that's around about it. Are there any questions or, you know? No, I, I have to say it's great to see stuff from a different fair than we usually see. So I appreciate your staying up so late in the middle of the morning. <laughs> thanks, Bill. Great. Thanks, John. Joey, you've been uh, patiently, you have your hand up. Joey, uh, uh, let's see, we need to take you off the mute here. You uh, have to unmute yourself. You're still muted. Off. How about there now? you go. Yes, now we can hear you. So oh, there we go. Okay, we're going to take you into the living room and show you some artifacts. Okay, you see me okay, everyone? Yep, we see you. Okay, great. I'm just going to show you some, uh, to keep it really fast, we have um, some pieces of the New York State Pavilion uh, that we, I had collected in the 70s before anybody thought to uh, put a fence around it. And uh, these are some of the candlestick lights. So we have about uh, four of them. And what's interesting is uh, last night we tried to screw a bulb in them, but none of the bulbs work. So they have a, uh, a special bulb that uh, the blue globes sat in. Um, over here, if you're seeing these okay, uh, these are the mold cast lamps um, that we have about uh, six of them. And again, they were collected uh, well before, um, you know, any kind of, uh, you were really just free to explore. Um, and one of them still has a, the glass globe in it. So we always kid around that inside this glass globe, it's still 1964, 65. Um, and you can see those a little closer. And here's another one that we pulled out of the pavilion in the 70s. Um, and we don't know if it was uh, used during the fair. It might have been used during, uh, during rock concerts in the 70s. It's a, sort of a cannon light. Cannon a Canon spotlight. And uh, I found this just sitting there. Uh, the pavilion was all uh, open and empty. And, uh, and it was right on the mezzanine level. So it has its own handle. So I just walked out with it. Um, 
the, one of the one of the things that we've carried around with us on our World's Fairest gatherings is a piece of the Aquacade seats, which we took many, many of them. Um, this is the one we hang up in our home. Uh, for people that don't know what the Aquacade is, some of our friends don't know about the 39th Fair, we just tell them it's a piece of deck chair from the Titanic. Um, this is a big, big piece of glass that uh, fell off the sky streak, and we think it's the side glass uh, in back of the, in back of the uh, machinery. And this came down uh, pretty much intact, and we put a poster in back of it. Um, and again, it's uh, very heavy. So actually, I'm glad nobody can go in there again. But the, uh, our, our, main, um, our main collecting happened from 1972 to the day they demolished it is the uh, United States Pavilion. And these are pieces of iron that I had picked up off the floor. Uh, and one piece in particular that we don't have here, um, Uh, was so heavy and so big that it bent the handlebars on my bicycle. Uh, and this was a big piece. We don't know, we have a feeling this might be, this came from the area where the ride was. So this might be part of the track, we don't know. Um, and my, over the years, we had glued some stuff to it to make it look like a robot face. And it was hanging up in our backyard for many, many years. Here's another unbelievably heavy piece. And my father would say to me, what are you going to do with all these pieces? And I said, well, I'm just going to save them. And, uh, you know, the wheels have turned, and now we can display them on Bill, Bill Carter's show. <laughs> so I think that's about it. Well, here's some more iron. <laughs> some more iron from the United States Pavilion. And uh, that's about it. I do have... Uh, as you all know, Aquacade bricks. So if anybody would like an Aquacade brick that comes to our World's Fairest Gathering, uh, I'll bring one for you. But uh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And I'm so happy to have showed all, all, all our stuff to you. Hey, Joey, you're making me glad I collect paper and not uh, iron and bricks. But, <laughs> I but know. I, I'm not sure what the statute of limitations is, but you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can only be used against you. <laughs> it's it's very it's very funny because um, uh, Johnny Pirro and uh, Craig Bavaro and many many other people explored the United States Pavilion. Uh, we put on our miners' hats, and um, and I often joke that if you've ever seen if you've seen any teenagers being thrown out of there during the 1970s, it was probably the three of us. Great, thanks. Okay, can we jump to James Scott? I'm just looking at who's who, who's had their hand up a while. So James, hey there. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this, Bill, because uh, I love talking about the World's Fairs, but especially the 1964 World's Fair. For me, I credit it for uh, my early interest in science and becoming a professional astronomer and. Uh, uh, it all harkens back to the 64 New York World's Fair for me. So it's got a special place in my heart. As I said last week, I always look through all the photos that everybody um, puts on to, uh, puts out there uh, on Facebook in particular and kind of look for myself because through a series of unfortunate circumstances, I don't have any photos or facts from the 1964 World's Fair personally. And my journey began about 10 years ago when I, when I discovered eBay. And, uh, and uh, for some reason, I saw something from the 64 World's Fair. And I thought, wow, that's right. And I started remembering a lot of things. So what I've got is a, a little bit of a collection. I've got the usual stuff, the, the, the ashtrays and the, the glassware and all that. But uh, what I was really after on eBay and, and continue to be are things that I had when I was a kid or my mother had when I was a kid. And I finally find them on eBay. And one of them is, is kind of an unusual item. It's, it's a dollar horse. Um, these are very popular in Sweden and have been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they look almost exactly the same for hundreds and hundreds of years. So I looked on eBay and kept seeing dollar horses, but 
the woman that I bought this from assured me that she actually bought it from the Sweden Pavilion of the 1964 World's Fair. So this is a legitimate one. The one that my mother had and would put on the centerpiece of the dining room table at Christmas was huge. It was like a foot and a half, but I was lucky to find one that, you know, I was fairly confident actually came from the 1964 World's Fair. And I kind of like these artifacts from the, the country pavilions that are a little bit off the beaten path. So, so that's one of the, the prize ones I've got, as well as a tin from the China Pavilion that had candies in it. And uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of these. Again, another eBay find. Um, coconut flavored candies from China. And unfortunately it's empty or I would have probably tried to, to eat one of them. And then the last of the, the things that are kind of important to me, uh, this, unlike the others, which were reproducing my childhood, this one is from the 1967 Montreal Fair, which I also went to. Um, and I don't have any personal memories of it. Uh, and it is, somebody did say, you know, 1967 Canada. Um, it's a Matryoshka, and it is from the USSR Pavilion nesting, nesting dolls. Uh, you probably see in a lot of these. My daughter, I adopted her about 10 years ago and she loves Matryoshkas. So when I saw this one from the 67 uh, Montreal World's Fair, I just had to, had to pick it up. And it's one of the prizes in my collection because of her more than, more than my reproducing my childhood. I'm sort of reproducing hers. Hey, James, remind me later on. I actually have pictures of that on display at the uh, USSR Pavilion. I'll get you a oh. copy. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen a few photos that do have the, the dollar horses in the, in the Sweden pavilion. I've got a few of those. I don't know if this might be one of them that's in the photos or not. That's part of the intrigue of this game, but uh, yeah, if you've got the Matryoshkas, I definitely don't have a, a photo of that. That'd be wonderful. The other thing I actually have, but I can't find it is a wallet that I had. Um, it's a Brown kids wallet, but I suspect it's probably from the Oklahoma or something like that because it's it's brown leather with leather stitching um and i can't find it and i'm concerned but maybe if you do this again i'll try to find it i don't know if anybody do you know brown kids wallet again it's kind of like hand it looks like it's hand carved but it's you know i'm sure it's it's machined or something like that with some western motif um have you ever run across any of those in in your uh, travels or anybody ever run across one of those kids brown leather wallets? I have but not from Oklahoma. Yeah I'm not sure if it was from Oklahoma or not. I, I had it I bought it at the fair but um, and then lost it as you know when I was like 15 I was like ah, I don't know, screw this this is old and ugly and threw it out and now I wish I had it again but I did find one on eBay and of course we all know the you know we all know these guys that are pretty common, but I remember clutching them going up the Van Wick back home. Um, you know, every time I would go to the fair, which was many times, um, I would make sure to go to the Molarama and get a dinosaur and would clutch them in the back seat thinking about dinosaurs. So somebody else mentioned, you know, getting an early interest in dinosaurs. That was one of my early interests as well. And vivid memories of clutching those guys on the way home. That's great. Thanks much. It, again, I remind me after because I have mine like a sieve, but I know I do have the USSR dolls. And at the 39th World's Fair, they had one of those uh, giant horses. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think they had one of the 33 as well. And uh, they certainly a, a national, um, you know, national symbol you learn a lot about. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, Jason, see you waving there. Muted. There you go. There we go. Bill, thank you for doing uh, doing all this. Um, and I do want to tell you that next time you tell the story about the Egyptian cotton, you should end it with, and then, you know, several weeks ago, I looked her up online, and now she's the Assistant Cultural Minister of Egypt. My, my wife, when I was telling her the cotton story, said, did you go out with her? I said, I was 12, you know. Or was 18, so. <laughs> but... Um, I'd like you, I've got uh, stuff everywhere. My best World's Fair piece is probably the uh, Skyride Employees Only sign from the uh, Swiss Skyway from the 6465 Fair, which is somewhere in my parents' house right now. 
but I do have uh, some more recent stuff and some unique stuff. Um, we have the uh, great moments with uh, Mr. Lincoln record from the Illinois Pavilion, and it was mailable. So you put a stamp on it, you put your address on it, and you can send it to yourself or to a friend. Uh, some monorail stickers from the 64-65 fair, uh, red one and then the blue one. Uh, we you know, talked about the, the, any particular reason, do you know why one was red or one was blue? I don't know. And supposedly one is rarer than the other, but I don't remember which is which. Wh whichever one is not currently on eBay, I guess is the rarest one. <laughs> uh, hey, my guess is they, they just printed them in two different colors and you got the luck of the draw. Uh, you mentioned the Ford pins a couple of um, a couple of episodes ago, and that's one that I picked up. The glow in the dark ones. That one's from New Jersey. Uh, and that same one we mentioned the irradiated dime. So I had to go out and find myself one of those. And when I was looking for them, it turns out I didn't know this that um, in a different design they also did irradiated dimes at um, some atomic specialist. I can't remember what it was. It was somewhere down south, but it was the laboratory uh, that they used to produce um, a lot of the uh, radiation stuff for, I don't know if it was for missiles or if it was for something else, but it was like the World Atomic Center somewhere down south. Oak Ridge, I think. Yeah, it might have been it. Um, then we have a lucky penny from the 64-65 uh, World's Fair. And I've got stuff from a lot of World's Fairs, but most of my collection leans into 6465 because that's the fair my mother went to. Uh, got some tickets from the fair. Uh, a creamer cap advertising the uh, RCA pavilion. And I've seen these for some of the other pavilions too. But uh, some of the neatest things I got was last year for Christmas, um, my dad retired a couple years ago. And when he did, the museum in my hometown uh, asked him if he would be interested in, in joining their board of directors. He's, he's got a historical collection and he's interested in local history. Uh, and the, um, they had to sell off some of their storage areas. And in one of them was all the stuff that the governor of Maryland, who was from my hometown, uh, had been gifted at the 64-65 World's Fair during the opening day of the Maryland Pavilion. And they were going to throw it out. And my dad said, can I have it? And they said, sure. So he gave me a big box of it for Christmas last year. Uh, we have, and I don't know if this is going to be too easy to see, the, um, it's a medal from the uh, United States Pavilion. And then on the back it says, in commemoration of your visit to the federal exhibit, Challenge to Greatness. Uh, and then two similar ones that are a little smaller. This one is from the New York State Pavilion. And it's got the New York seal on the front and then an impression of the uh, pavilion on the back. And these all came with uh, little easels so you could display them on your desk. Uh, and then this one is similar to the one that Albert showed, but I think this is the common version with the Unisphere on the front and then the uh, seal of the city of New York on the back. Now, the oddest thing that, that I got, and I have no idea what this is, if anybody, actually, I, one more thing before we get to that. This is from the Oklahoma World's Fair Commission. Uh, the governor of Oklahoma presented this to the governor of Maryland. It's actually a set, I've got some more of them. Uh, their, uh, the dedication of the Maryland Pavilion and the Oklahoma Pavilion was either on the same day or the same weekend, uh, based on the pictures that they found with all this stuff. So they were there together and exchanged gifts. And then we don't know where this came from. It was in with the stuff, so we assume it was a gift. But there was a flag set um, with the US flag, the uh, state of Maryland flag, and this pickle flag. And I, I haven't been able to find any indication that Heinz or Vlasic or Mount Olive or anybody like that had a presence at the fair. So I have no idea why the governor of Maryland was presented with a pickle flag. But there we are. Well, it's pretty neat. You know, I was looking at that. I, I don't have a pickle flag, and I don't have those medallions, but I have the exact same flesh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Appreciate you showing it. Yes, uh, thank you. R Rob, you had your hand up? Hello. Hey, there you go, Rob. Yeah, 
just a couple of quick things. Thank you again for uh, hosting. Here's a, uh, a brochure from the 1940 season of the uh, New York World's Fair. It's not a map, it's just a multi-page brochure. And uh, what, I, what I like to collect is the, um, like the toys that were there. Many of you have the, uh, the glider ride toy, and even if it, you find one in mint condition, it looks something like this. And uh, I wasn't happy with it, so I, what I did was I went ahead and, and uh, I painted it and uh, put new decals on there, and I put people on there, including the driver. And so here's the, uh, the glider ride. Um, Remodel. I, I plan to do the same thing with my uh, personal escorter, which is a, a slightly larger scale, but um, anybody interested in that? But my place uh, possession was that I did a model of the fair and appeared in the Long Island Press the newspaper. And much to my surprise, a couple of weeks later, I received this letter in the mail. It says, uh, dear Robert, the excellent job you did on constructing a model of the World's Fair has come to my attention. I congratulate you on this accomplishment and wish you success in your future endeavors. Enclosed is a World's Fair medallion, which I thought you might like to have. Signed by Robert Moses. Well, I thought, wow, that's pretty impressive. And, I, and here's that medallion, which is a... Uh, Unlike Albert, it's not solid gold, it's uh, solid bronze. <laughs> but anyway, I treasure it just the same, the fact that it did come from the World's Fair president. And uh, there you go, Bill. For uh, folks that aren't familiar with Rob's work, uh, a number of us are very pleased to have uh, his models that he's made of uh, various pavilions of the World's Fair. Uh, we don't have time for it now, but if, a future time, Rob, if you'd like to show that video if you made off of that massive model, that would be uh, be fun to show everybody. But uh, my New York State Pavilion model is uh, quite a, a treasure, and I, I know uh, Mitch has one. And Matter of fact, Mitch, are you, you there? Yeah, uh, Mitch has a, a super collection. We did a little show and tell James Brown put one together last week, and Mitch could take us for the next two weeks, I think. But uh, we'll challenge you if you could hit us with the uh, hit us with your best. Uh, I, I'll I'll hit you with like five or six things, but can I log in with my phone so I can go mobile? Sure. I'm I think uh, I'm connecting now. I am going to. All right, we're not hearing you, Mitch. Seeing you, Mitch. Okay, now we hear you. Okay, let me flip the camera around. All right. All right, so I'm going to show you, um, not that mess, but a, um, a few rare items that aren't necessarily collectibles. Uh, some signs, generally, maybe a couple other things. Um, first, this is, you can see it's a monorail pavilion. Um, deep in this photo, I don't have the high resolution picture handy, but deep in this photo right here, this little red strip there, there's a sign hanging there. I actually have that sign, which I'll show you in a sec. And I'm also going to show, which some of you guys saw last week, uh, from the International Plaza. Um, this was a snack bar that can give you fruit drinks and banana dogs. And just the fact that that sign became available at some point, and it says banana dogs, I had to have it. So I'm going to go mobile. I'll show you a couple of things. I'll come back upstairs and show you a few more things. And I'll keep it down to just a few minutes. It's either going to be a few minutes or a few hours. So we'll pick a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Don't get, don't get nauseous as I move. First of all, there's the uh, banana dog sign. This is the best I can do because uh, it's, it's tall. It's a little over six feet, I think. And it's uh, it's fun to have. This is the 
this is the monorail sign, which says this way to the monorail. And what they did was a lot of people would enter through the exit and try to get on the monorail. So uh, we believe in 1865, they hung the sign up over the walkway that goes underneath through the station. So people would go through to the proper side to board and not try to go in the up escalator. Uh, that, that's about eight feet long. It's made out of wood with an aluminum frame. It's quite exciting to own. Found it in uh, Bayside, Queens at uh, a house sale because somebody was moving out. Supposedly the original owner of the house was an architect that worked on the fair. So I was able to scoop that up. Um, I do have some other things stacked behind here, but we're not going to cover that because I want to give plenty of time for other people. This is a sign that uh, was taken at the end of the fair by a Queens policeman. Uh, he stuck it in the, tr in the trunk of his patrol car one day. And this was likely at the parking lot uh, to, uh, and, and it's a uh, reflective sign. It says exhibits open 10 a.m. to 1, uh, 10 p.m. Amusements open until 2 a.m. So there was some, some partying going on at the uh, fair after midnight. Uh, similar signs were on every ticket booth, but they were small, obviously. So that's cool. That's rare. It's one of a kind. We haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen those uh, out in the market at all. Oh, here, here's something that's just, that's neat. Um, the uh, display to buy the uh, the license plates that that's uh, very collectible. It's falling over right now, but back then it was only ninety nine cents for one of these official license plates. Uh, there's a bunch of them on here, but some of them are rusty and old. Here's something uh, one of a kind, also. I don't know if I'm too close or not. I can't get a large photo, a large image on my phone here. Uh, but it this shows came just off fine. Of, we can read it just fine. All right, great. So this came off of the uh, Tower of Light Pavilion. Uh, I'll give it a sec. You can read it. I don't have to read it over, but uh, it, it's pretty cool. I got it from somebody who befriended uh, workers at the pavilion, I guess, uh, during the fair and at demolition. I also have a booklet that came with it, a binder with a lot of original uh original papers and the script and everything from the show, uh, from the pavilion, which is neat. So let me move on. Show you something over here first. Also, this came from uh, from John Penn. First of all, there's, there's a Can you see if I go side? Yeah, you, it's one of Robbie Young's in the New York State Pavilion. Oh. What's going on? We hear you. What do you see? We see the signs okay, from the what do you pavilion. See? Yeah, okay, we, we saw good. the model and the signs underneath. Okay, yeah. Those are the um, from the uh, administration building, the model. This was grabbed by Mike Pender, like uh, you mentioned before. Uh, when they finished using something, he scooped it up and he kept it. And this came uh, from Mike Pender to John, and then John uh, sold some of these which is pretty neat. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything else. You can see there's a ton of ton of items. I'm going to stick to a couple more rare things and then we'll move on. Uh, you see the, uh, the glider rides, but this is a green flag that actually was on top of one of the glider rides, the green route, and there were a bunch of these flags on top of each glider ride, uh, donating the color of the, um, noting the color of the route. Okay, hang on. Oops, it's a Chrysler chair. This is fun. Again, most of these items were not meant to be collectibles. Chrysler Corporation, the colors were a little off on this one. It was painted and uh, uh, I was able to uncover the, the Chrysler writing on the back. So I'm thinking this may have been originally a, a, a white chair with the blue writing on it. And I was able to get the blue paint off of the writing. Uh, this, um, Mary Roebling married into the Roebling family. The Roebling family is famous for their cabling and building the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, much of the cabling that was, that was uh, used in construction at the fair, probably New Jersey Pavilion, but definitely New York Pavilion, came from the Roebling Company. Um, she was invited to be part of the New York World's Fair, a member of the New York World's Fair Corporation. So this was a, uh, a certificate they gave her with original signatures. And again, there's Robert Moses' original signature, which is cool. 
Um, this is no big deal. This, this came when they sold tires, they uh, advertised the hull drivers, and this was round because it went in the center of the tire that was on display. Uh, New York State Pavilion, which is our favorite because we've done so much work on it. Um, the snack bars did have uh, napkins and placemats, which is very nice. Uh, the Star of the Fair, it says on it. Here's a whole bunch of patches. Uh, again, not necessarily meant as collectibles, most likely came off of the uniforms or didn't quite make it to the uniform. Some of them are in a little funny shape because they've been pulled off of uniforms with this whole bunch of different types there. Um, when uh, Bill was involved also in the Tomorrowland movie, but I was contacted by Tomorrowland move, uh, people, the producers and uh, set designers and costume designers because they wanted to get close up to some of these patches and uniforms that I have. I'm going to show you one uniform to top this off when we're finished. This is, uh, this is the only one that we've seen of this uh, type of map also. These maps uh, to visit your postal exhibit. Uh, it's a UR here map. This came from next to the GE Pavilion uh, and Tower of Light right in between there. Uh, these were, in 1965, they were placed on top of all the mailboxes uh, to try to draw attention to uh, get you to visit the postal exhibit. Uh, quick backstory on this one. I was uh, shopping in an antique store with Stephanie, who we'll probably speak to shortly. Um, and I found in the post office a little pack of, uh, of uh, Instamatic slides. And this is a blow up of it. It's not very sharp. But on the top of the stack was actually a photograph of this exact sign on top of a mailbox by the GE Pavilion. And I found that in Pennsylvania, which is pretty neat. This sign came off from a distant relative, pulled it down off of a mailbox on the last day of the fair, closing day. So that's where I got this one from. Uh, this, this I haven't seen either. I just love the graphics. Uh, the First Life Porpoise Show at the New World's Fair, Florida State Exhibit. Uh, graphics and colors are great. Uh, I don't know if it's rare or not, but I haven't seen another one. I just want to uh, know who, if you go back to that for a second, sure. on the bottom right, it says, win a porpoise. Anybody have a <laughs> porpoise in their collection? Happy the porpoise. Actually, I think I do. I have one. I have one, Bill. Yeah, but I mean, did they give you a real porpoise or was this a win a happy stuffed porpoise? I mean, I, I'd want a real porpoise for that sign. <laughs> sort of like they would give away goldfish at the carnivals. Yeah, I would expect a porpoise, wouldn't you? Well, real real quick on an aside, my daughter for a while was really into uh, dolphins. She just thought they were the greatest thing. And uh, we had a uh, dolphin on a float for the Rose Parade. And uh, at the end of the parade, take apart the float. And we took home the dolphin, life-size dolphin, and sat on a wooden cradle at the edge of her bed. And she goes to school and everybody says, I have a dog, I have a cat. And she goes, I have a dolphin. And people say, you don't have a dolphin. Yeah, he sleeps at the foot of my bed. She literally had people come into the house and walk upstairs and go, wow, she's got a dolphin. So I just see the happy sign. It's just bringing me back to our, our daughter with the dolphin at the foot of her bed. Sorry, sorry to digress. There's no digression. Uh, a couple more items. This was a very early logo before they came up with Unisphere, or Unisphere was practically even a concept. This is a little hand-painted sign. I have a couple of them. Uh, and this may have been the logo going forward if they came up with something different than the Unisphere. Unisphere maybe a giant map in the middle, but uh, this, this is very early. I'm going to flip my phone sideways again and just... Uh, uh, I don't know if you got glare. You can see that okay, but that's a complete, almost complete, there's no jacket, but that's an Allied Maintenance uniform from the World's Fair. The Allied Maintenance did uh, all the street cleaning and garbage dumping and all that, uh, drove around in little uh, Cushman, uh, Cushman carts and things. And um, this is the uniform with the pants and shirt and tie and the badge, the original badge that was worn with this, uni with this uniform. Got a little glare there. I have a bunch of other uniforms, uh, again, which I helped with uh, Tomorrowland. Got pictures of all these things. That's the police uniform uh, shirt. Uh, there's uh, administration admissions jackets and things back there. Uh, sign uh, for the uh, subway. I got the other signs. That, that a whole bunch of other stuff for another time. So I think that's good. I think you saw it. I think you saw enough. Last thing is a uh, medallic art company it must have made these out of resin but it's a new york state uh, pavilion medallion in uh, a giant size on a plaque which sits above my desk right below my uh, little seal of approval
Okay, thank you very much for your patience. Oh, thank you, Mitch, appreciate it. Ellis, you had your hand up. Okay, thank you, I uh, appreciate uh, this event. Um, <clears throat> I had a nice collection that uh, died in my parents' basement due to a flood. So um, my sons were very nice. They tolerate my insanity and they bought me a, a decent collection of stuff from wherever. Um, so these are kind of run of the mill, but I can show them. And I think I checked as to the question of the monorail sticker. I think the blue ones were the rare ones, which is why I've got um, a red one. <laughs> um, so that's ordinary. Um, this was kind of odd. It's when I first saw it, I, I didn't know what it was, but I think it's a bumper sticker. Um, not a very attractive one, but um, my dad never allowed us to get bumper stickers because he didn't want to deface his car. So I wouldn't have been able to do much with it anyway. Um, this one I'd like some help with. Um, where is it? It looks like a UNICEF pin. Um, so I'm wondering, I mean, I know that you had to pay to go on the uh, Small World ride. I'm wondering whether this pin was something you got when you took the ride. Does anybody know? Uh, I uh, actually have some of those around here, too. And uh, they didn't give them out at the ride. They were at the gift shop. I've got a whole – somewhere I've got the others. Uh, but, yeah, you got those at the, uh, the gift shop. Okay. Um, then uh, I guess uh, Viewmaster Real. Um, I do not have a Viewmaster machine anymore. We used to have them and I chucked them. So I'll have to find one of those on eBay. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have the wonderful world of chemistry brochure. And um, lastly, I mean, I know we all love dinosaurs and this is the Sinclair brochure. You know, regarding those moldoramas, my, my sister's a poet and so, she had attended the fair with us and, and wrote a poem about the fair and talked about how it connected me and her and my mother because my mother had been to the 39 World's Fair. And as to the pickles, my mother said she, her prized possession from 39 was a Heinz pickle pin. So not a flag, but a pin. Um, but my sister wrote about the um, dinosaur exhibit and the Moldorama and kind of talked about how it was interesting that the dinosaurs created oil, which created plastic, which then was made into dinosaurs in these machines, and did talk about how we liked to clutch them and smell them. They had that smell when they were fresh out of the machine. So um, dinosaurs are a big part of our life too. All right, pickle pin. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, you may remember at the D23 in Florida at Disney, they had uh, one, an actual operating Moldorama, and, and uh, it was wonderful to see it there. Oh, I tell you, what, what we took to get that there, because the guy approached me and said, I've got this, do you want to bring it there? And we said, okay, it worked out. Disney said yes. Then the Disney legal people got involved. Um, <laughs> you know, what was the plastic made of? And, you know, you had to make sure that it was a non-carcinogenic sort of thing. But then the issue is what if somebody bites the tail off one of these dinosaurs and <laughs> starts Lord. eating it? So, And then we had the issue of, I don't remember how many people were at the conference, uh, but how many, how fast could you turn out dinosaurs in this thing? Because they were afraid that they'd have a line of 400 people buying dinosaurs and not going to the, uh, uh, you know, the talks and everything. So we made a bunch of dinosaurs in advance. In advance, and then you, if you had a lucky number, you ended up with a dinosaur. But yeah, we almost we had the machine literally sitting at the contemporary resort ready to go, but we weren't. It was down to the very wire whether or not the attorneys were going to let us plug it in. So, <sighs> hey, Neil, Bill, that concern about the somebody eating the dinosaurs is is quite uh, valid. My wife's strongest memory of the fair; she's younger than we are is her brother eating the dinosaur that she made so she never got to keep it he ate it on the way home apparently oh uh well uh did, did, has he turned out okay i mean did it do anything strange to him <laughs> well i think it explains a lot myself i'm like, in trouble <laughs> he tends to tide pods now <laughs> great thanks ellis appreciate Thank it you. let's see appreciate who it. else has a hand up don don lancaster 
Anytime you need to use yourself. I think I'm unmuted. I have uh, five items. I don't have anything super rare. Uh, got a lot of things around here, you know, like World's Fair posters and such. But I've got a few things. Uh, my family knows my interests in fairs, and they tend to send me gifts. This was something that my sister found at a garage sale. I don't know if you can see that. That's a tea towel from the 39 World's Fair. Um, you know, it's just a real nice image. I don't know if it's rare or not, but I love it. Uh, from the 64, 65, I have a lot of things that are hanging on the wall here, but uh, when I was visiting Flushing Meadows just to tour the grounds, I bought the, uh, the official souvenir book. This is the strangest souvenir book of anything. There's a bunch of predictions about what life is going to be like in the future in here. And one of the guys wrote a whole article about what are we going to do with all our free time? Because we'll have all this free time and, uh, you know, all this time because none of us will have to work. He doesn't even think about the fact that maybe we have to make money. Doesn't seem to even come into his mind. But uh, this is another common item. I just got this recently because I've always wanted one. The World's Fair game. Um, you know, I don't know if you've seen this. I, I've looked inside. This one, I got it off of eBay for 10 bucks because the cover's in such bad condition. But uh, if the rules of this thing, I'm not sure you can call it a game uh, more than uh, a challenge to just figure out what the rules are. It's a very unusual thing, but it's a fun little thing to have. Um, moving on to the 62 World's Fair. These are postcards from the 62 World's Fair. I have all eight of these. Uh, they're also records. So you would get the record from the fair you could play this. They were created by the people who owned a, a pancake a restaurant called Smitty's Pancakes. And apparently they uh, had all these made. They used local artists to do the recordings. If you go to YouTube and look up uh, World's Fair, 62 World's Fair postcards, the recordings are on YouTube. They are absolutely dreadful. <laughs> so, uh, but they're, they're really nice images from the fair, actually. And there were eight of them. If you are interested in those. Archie McPhee's still sells those. You can buy them in packs of eight. So, and last but not least, I mentioned this on your last presentation, Bill. I have a uh, Expo 67 passport book. And the story behind this is a good friend uh, of ours. Her mother went to Expo 67 and she actually did. She went and got all the passports. I don't know if you can see that. Let me hold up closer. She got all the stamps from all the pavilions and she kept this as a souvenir of the fair. I never got to see the fair in operation. I, I went there on a date after it became Man of this World, which was an unfortunate experience. But uh, uh, she went and actually saw every pavilion when it was still active. And so I really treasure this. When, when her mother died, like I said, a lot of friends know my interest. So she just sent this to me because she knew I'd like to have it in the collection. So that's it for me. Oh, great stuff. Thanks. And uh, I thank you for letting us know how dreadful those records were so we can skip them. <laughs> they are not memorable, shall we say. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Stephanie, I see your hand up. And then Richard, I see you waving. We'll get to you after Stephanie. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I do have um, quite a bit of the souvenirs. Um, I have a, a, some from 39 and quite a bit from 64. Uh, the good thing about um, Mitch's amazing, wonderful collection um, is that it's quite extensive. So a lot of times when he has, uh, comes across duplicates or if he sees something that he knows I will like, then he gets it for me, which is great. Um, and I also just pick up um, things that uh, appeal to me particularly, um, but none of it is exceedingly rare. So I didn't really bring any of that. Um, but he, it's almost like a part-time job with his collection. He, it really is quite a lot of work to maintain such a fantastic collection. He looks on eBay quite a bit. And because he knows I like vintage clothing, um, like I have a lot of vintage clothing. If I have to get dressed up for anything, it's always vintage clothing. So he found two things that are fair related. I don't think they're actually from the fair, but I'll show them to you. There's this dress, it's pretty spectacular. Here's the tag. You can see it's, it is a vintage item. Um, it's a sleeveless dress with all kinds of pavilions on it and uh, the Unisphere. 
I did wear this dress during one of the open gate events that the New York that the New York State Pavilion Paint Project, of which I'm a member, we we hosted, um, and it was very well received, obviously. <laughs> and um, recently, he got me this coat, which is pretty cool. It's a little dirty. I have to get it cleaned, but. It's got like that vintage cut and like the nice buttons and all the pictures of the pavilions on it. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't, I, I definitely don't think that these were sold at the fair, but maybe um, department stores were selling them around the time. I'm not really sure if anyone has any information. If you could let me know, that would be cool. But yeah, so I just wanted to show those two items. And then also, I'm sitting, I'm actually sitting in a chair from the Bell exhibit. It was from the ride. And this also came from Mitch because he acquired this chair um, and then he had the opportunity, but it's missing, it's missing the speakers um, up by the head. And um, it was also missing the bracket on the bottom that sort of held it to the, the mechanism that moved it. And then when he had an opportunity to get a chair that um, did have the speakers and did have the bracket, he took that and he asked me if I was interested in this, which of course I was. Um, and so we figured out a way to put it on um, a circular trash dolly so it can actually like roll around and, and it keeps it upright because without a, a, a base to adhere to it, it's sort of top heavy and it lays on its back. So. But um, the fabric inside was completely shredded, almost, almost like a cat had shredded it. And I managed to find um, fabric that very closely matches it on, on eBay. So I recovered the back and I recovered the seat. Um, and it has the, the number, it's number 190. <laughs> yeah, shell, uh, plastic or? It. I'm sorry. What was that? Oh, I don't know. No, I, was, then, I was saying I have to look for the uh, uh, 190 for you in some of my pictures. Yes, please. And then sorry. the real, the really cool thing about the back is, uh, you can see the paint. The paint's like all chipped and everything. And it's really bad um, down here because this is where it used to be dragged, dragged on by the previous owner. But this little this little wheel um, actually would bring the speakers in and move them out. So when it would be out like this, the speakers would be away from the, the people's heads. And then when it, it hit a runner, it would bring the speakers in. And I just think it's cool because it's shaped like a bell. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, and one more thing I just wanna show you. Um, it has a rope. This is this is the rope that held you in, I suppose. <laughs> That's what they put across your lap when you got in the seat. So yeah, I, I pointed out to my fellow Disney folks that uh, you know you think about all the things you have to do for ride control and guest safety and everything today. So back then you had a piece of rope that just had a hook. Yeah. It didn't even have a latch, so you could just take it off you know, jump off, run through the ride, hop back on, but. Uh, yes, you know. and one more thing I wanted to say, if you ever do a Disney one, I have a lot of sweet Disney stuff too, like Ken said earlier, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I could show a lot of really nice stuff in that respect. Steph? Super. Yeah, Steph, one, yeah. Of the highlight, one of the highlights is when you and Mitch brought the car uh, seat to one of our shows and I got to sit in it. That's this one, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Right, okay, we'll hop yeah. over to uh, Richard and then after that we'll go to Alan Coates. Okay, all right. I want to um, share some pictures. So let's see if we can get that done. I, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, here, hang on one second. That should allow people to do that. Give it a try now. Okay, thanks. Here we go. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Yep. Yes. Right. 
I'm going to see if I can make it. All right. I visited a number of these sites and I wanted to show you what they look like today uh, within the last couple of years. Um, this is inside the Hall of Science that was in the Transportation Center and they updated it with about $30 million of renovations about 15 years ago or so. It's a wonderful place to visit and bring kids. And I was there and I was a member for a year and um, there's some other connections to how they've repurposed it. Um, this was on a special day where the Maker Fair was open and um, they had a lot of exhibits, a lot of activities, and people could get in for free until about one or two. And this is at the very ground floor. Um, you could irradiate your dime somewhere, I think, around <laughs> down here. And that's, that's where I irradiated my dime when, when I was there. Uh, let's see. Now, the Maker Fair Corporation, in fact, rented that space out. They went belly up or bankrupt last summer or so. But for two years, I was there as part of the Maker Crew teaching people how to make electronic um, jewelry, which they could take home and, and got for free. And uh, here you can see some people that I was helping that I created some jewelry or helped them create. Uh, some jewelry and, and and they took away from the fair so that hall of science thing is still very very much in use now i'm going to jump over i was two falls ago in the site of expo 67 i wasn't there for the expo but i've been on the public park um, that hosted it several times and this is what it looked like when i was there very very interesting still and worth a visit and very close to the subway stop, like Bill uh, told you, you've got a, there's a subway spur, spur on the Montreal uh, system that will get you out there. And it's worth it. They've got exhibits about what um, the earth is like and the ecosystem, and they'll give you lectures about climate change in a little auditorium and such. And it's got a nice view. Okay, and also this is what uh, Habitat 67 looked like still um, people are there and it's in uh, the St. Lawrence among the uh, little islands that are there. Now, the other thing I visited isn't exactly World's Fair, but it's Montreal's Olympics. They're very proud of the 76 Olympics that they prepared for. So I think it's worth showing you some of that too. The Olympic Park's about three miles from downtown. It, it takes a while to get there by bus but it's got a magnificent stadium inside and it's got a magnificent, absolutely magnificent uh, Olympic swim area that you can go and tr that the Olympic people train in. And they come from all over the world in order to do this. There are five different pools and uh, uh, areas that you can train in uh, down there. And it's, and it's really, really impressive. Also impressive is the office space has something like an incline or funicular that goes up a very, very fancy building. And this is what it looks like at night on a misty night when we were there. Um, if you see that little blue thing that comes down from what was the light illuminating a low hanging fog, um, that's where a cable ride takes you up this funicular up to the top where you've got an observation deck. And uh, I was very, very lucky to capture this to see how it looked then. Um, and in order to get to Montreal, I also had another retro experience from about the 64 years. And that's that I took the last operating Skyliner train that Amtrak was running. They were running between um, the Albany stop and uh, the Montreal stop on one leg for a couple weeks. Uh, two summers ago and between Boston and Portland for a, a, a couple weeks. And that's what the inside from a, a kind of a, a space age interior looked like as they imagined in, in the mid fifties and early sixties. And they had pretty good observation uh, panels uh, on, on the right there. And this is what it looked, oh, sorry. Let's go the other way. Yeah, and this is what it looked like during the day, and it was foliage season, and it was uh, um, quite a quite a beautiful uh, ride up to Montreal from New York. My my friend that I traveled with, I used to work with, and he was a native New Yorker, 
So we got in on um, Penn Station and got up to Montreal and spent some time there. So that's kind of what some of these sites look like now. They're still being used and they're still worth visiting, I think. Great, thanks. You're making me uh, nostalgic for my days upstate New York. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. Great, Alan? You might be muted. Alan, you need you to, me? there you go. Okay. Hi, everyone. Let's go from Chicago to New York. This is a, is a beautiful program of, from the uh, Century of Progress, 1933, published by Santa Fe Railroad. And it was really a promotion to take the train to Chicago to see the fair. And it's really a, a very nice example of the Art Deco modern style of the, uh, of the fair architecture in a very beautiful uh, sepia brown printed, can everyone see that? Printed uh, uh, program. And let's see, uh, my favorite building, can we see the travel and transportation building? Isn't that beautiful? So it was this a real is one of my, uh, uh, something I happened to pick up for $4.95 somewhere. Yeah, that Not travel and transportation pavilion was interesting because those, uh, if you hold the picture back up again, the cables basically held the roof up from the outside to give it a giant amount of display place inside. Mm -hmm. And they were, architects were astonished that you could not need all those pillars and everything from a normal building. That's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. I guess that's Art Deco, but to go to New York, can, can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. To go to New York and add a personal touch to the preview opening, which was April 21st, 64, I believe. And dad and my father, Claude Coates, was the project designer for the Ford Pavilion's uh, Magic Skyway. My mother sent my brother and I postcards from, from the pavilion that day. And apparently it was a pretty chaotic kind of a day, maybe uh, somewhat like the opening day for Disneyland because uh, here she writes, uh, we're trying to get over to the GE Pavilion, but it's raining and things are a real mess, she says. So. The weather didn't cooperate, Bill, that day, if that's, if that's what uh, yeah, you're aware poured. of as well. And also, this is the card she sent to my brother at Pomona College at the time. And she says, uh, the, the ride is very impressive. This is the press preview. She says, I hope the demonstrations tomorrow don't disrupt the opening. He's so, at the Ford Pavilion, there were demonstrators, and I don't know what they were demonstrating about. It was the turbulent 60s after all, so it could have been who knows what. But there was disruption at the Ford Pavilion. Yeah, it was actually the throughout day. the whole uh, fairgrounds. It was the Congress of Racial Equality, and they were protesting uh, treatment of minorities, so they made a big point you know, the eyes of the world were on the fair, so where do you get the most uh, attention? So big events. So between the weather and the uh, planned protests, the opening of the fair had very few people. So your your parents were, uh, you know, among the minority being there that day. But Ford had a, had a good sense of humor about the whole thing. They sent my father a certificate of a pre... This is a copy of the... Certificate of Appreciation they sent to my father for his, uh, his efforts, uh, marked by interminable hours, hunger pangs, hopeless insomnia, and frustrations outside the pale of his regular assigned duties. Claude Coates is hereby appointed a permanent honorary member of the public relations staff of the <laughs> Ford Motor Company. <laughs> so the suits 
that we called them that came to wed or that, that were called that. Uh, they were they were okay guys, I guess, when things got a little rough. Uh, but uh, quickly, my mother was actually better at saving things than my father. Uh, Don, here is my mother's passport to Expo 67. And this is a wonderful picture, quickly. Um, my mother and a right. gentleman you'll recognize, back from Expo 70. And this is at the Polynesian Cultural Center in, on Oahu. And they're on their way back to LA from Expo 70. That's a wonderful picture of mom, Evelyn, and, and Roy. So, um, and quickly, Jason, I had a question for you about the Oklahoma World's Fair. When was that? Oh, he was talking about a wallet from the Oklahoma Pavilion at the uh, the World's Fair. At the oh, the Pavilion World's at the World's Fair. Fair. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I thought you said the Oklahoma World's Fair. All right. I actually had All something right. I wanted to uh, show you, uh, Alan. I posted this the other day uh, on Facebook, and uh, people, uh, for the folks that don't know, uh, Brother Claude was Alan's father. But Are folks still there? I got the message here yeah. that, okay. Yes. Yeah, I got yes. the message there that Zoom quit unexpectedly. So I don't know what happened there. That was a bizarre thing. Yeah, your audio fell, fell out and then came back. Oh, okay. Well, uh, hopefully it's still recording. Okay. Anyway, I had posted that picture of the uh, the tombstones at Disney World and people were trying to figure out who this person was that was so important he could actually be buried at Disney World. And I said, no, it's just a reproduction. So, uh, <laughs> They said the you know it was first at Disneyland. Oh, he was buried there. So <laughs> great, thanks. Who else do we have raising hands? Uh, let's see. Okay, Chris. So okay, we can hop off to Texas now. See, um, can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Christopher Medina. I live here in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, back in 68, we held the World's Fair, known as Hemisphere 68. Um, I myself didn't actually go to the fair. I actually missed it by about 10 years and half a dozen states, being born in Wisconsin in 78. Um, in around 2006 or so, I started finding about the history of the fair. I thought, oh, this is kind of neat. And so I bought a few items. And at that time, it was just to um, put a few things on the shelf, you know, kind of neat. Um, what I have here is a uh, Jim Beam decanter, and I've got the top house, I think, in a box somewhere so I can find it. But this was the first thing I bought. It's from Jim Beam. You can see it's got, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, uh, Hemisphere 68 on it. Um, this is one of the many souvenirs that was available at the fair. Um, and like I said, at the, time, at the time, I bought it just thinking, oh, this would be fun. Buy a few things, learn about downtown history, and put it on the shelf. But as I learned going through these things, each one told their own story. But um, over time, they started telling a bigger story, and I kind of got hooked on it. And I know a few others had mentioned about eBay. And around 2008, that's where I started looking at hemisphere items on eBay. And I had a lot of overtime at work, so I started going, buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now. Um, next thing you know, half a dozen items turned to a couple hundred items. And here we are in 2020, but 14 years later, and I have a private collection of over 2,000 items and growing uh, related to the hemisphere. Um, obviously, this is the, uh, the actual official uh, Hemisphere 68 guidebook. This is one of the original ones I have and in pretty good condition. Um, this here is um, the official souvenir ma uh, map book from the San Antonio World's Fair. And what they had here was they had different um, like art renderings. And that's how you would learn them. You would find your way around. You pick a number here, and you kind of squint your eyes down to the bottom and figure out which pavilion you wanted to look at. The neat thing about this, if I can find it, is that it actually has a paper cutout. You cut out all these different pieces. And you can actually make a paper replica of the Tower of the Americas, which was our theme stretch for the World's Fair, same as uh, Seattle had the, the iconic Space Needle. Now, over the years, I've collected a lot of the uh, souvenirs that as many other people have. I have a few other items here in a frame. I don't know if it's kind of hard to see or not. 
this here is the actual postal stamp done by the U.S. Post Office. And actually enough, if I was crazy enough to use these, these would still be valid, but I'm not going to. This here is one of the many uh, postcards uh, from Hemisphere. And then this here is actually the brochure from the Coca-Cola Pavilion, I mean, uh, Eastman Kodak. Uh, Kodak was one of the original uh, corporate pavilions to sign up for it. Their pavilion was built as a temporary structure, but it actually is still on the grounds today. It's pretty much abandoned and sealed up, but you, you, um, you can still go past it. Um, this here is a, um, zoom in a little bit better. This is actually a booklet of admission tickets to Hemisphere. There's actually a few of them still in there. This is the adult one for 20 bucks or $40. Uh, for $20, you can buy the children's book. Um, in recent years, I've gone beyond the general collecting in my research, and I've gone through and met people who were part of the Fair Corporation, and I got this is actually a progress report. I got this from the estate of the uh, family, the family estate of the guy who was the manager of the customer relations department at Hemisphere. And I don't know if you can see it there or not. It's kind of hard to see. But what this is, um, report to the Bureau of International Expositions in Paris, May 1st, 1965. This is actually a progress report written by San Antonio Fair Incorporated, which was the uh, non-governing body created to uh, oversee the fair, the fair operation, building, funding, and all that. So this was actually a progress report they submitted. This is a copy I got um, from the guy who was the manager of the customer relations department. So this actually gives you a lot of basic of what they were doing um, during construction at that time. Another thing I've gotten, which is behind the scenes information, this is actually, I'm going to read this one. This one's actually a San Antonio Fair Incorporated procedure, uh, procedure and Policy Manual. This was handed out to a lot of the uh, exhibitors and participants of the Fair Corporation um, about what do's and don'ts, what the guidelines were, uh, things like that. Another one I have here, um, this is another one. This is actually, uh, like I said, this is, this is actually the, the official logo of Hemisphere. Uh, the theme of our World's Fair was Confluence of Civilizations in the Americas. And the idea of that was to celebrate all of the different cultures that came from around the world to sell to, uh, to um, civilize, or I don't want to say civilize, we had a lot of Native Americans uh, to um, populate, I guess, for lack of a better term, the new world. Um, and I don't know if they have it here. I guess we do. Right here, you have the, um, the story of the logo of Hemisphere. First one here, you start with the world. Second step, you move, to the, you move to the Western Hemisphere. The third part of the story is that you go, uh, the emergence of the new world and the old starting to come together. And then the final step of our logo was the confluence of civilizations, the new and the old coming together in North America. Um, another thing I've been doing in recent years, since I've kind of gone beyond the general collecting of souvenir memorabilia, is I've got about a couple hundred of these now. But these are our um, black and white press images. I've gotten these through uh, historicalimages.com and a few other outlets. Uh, what you see here is the um, Tower of the Americas, the original arena, which was a 10,500 seat arena. And then here you have the original 2,800 seat theater, which is actually still on the site today. Actually, it's just that the theater and the tower, the original only two buildings left from this four building complex. Um, this uh, theater here actually has a mural that basically is a mosaic done by Mexican artist Juan O'Gorman. It was commissioned especially for the World's Fair to show the new and the old coming together. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you guys, and I'm going to have to back up a little bit to show it, is this, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, this is a, a self-screen poster of Coming, it says, come to Hemisphere at the bottom. This was actually, the original designs were done by the artist Robert Indiana. The uh, University of Texas at San Antonio, they actually have the original of this uh, poster where uh, Robert and Robert Indiana put the pieces together. This was actually a uh, original print. I even got it framed for about 40 bucks from this nice lady uh, who at the time said that uh, her husband had passed away and her husband got it from his then girlfriend. And she said, what do you want for this? I don't know. 
I'll pay you 40 bucks. She's like, all right, sold. <laughs> so that's the big thing from actual items from the Fair Corporation. The last thing I wanted to show you real quick was this is a yearbook. This is actually from uh, Thomas Jefferson High School here in San Antonio. This is actually the school I went to. Like I said, I graduated uh, in the mid 90s. But what I liked about this was that this is the 68 yearbook and they actually incorporated the Tower of the Americas as part of their yearbook that year. And uh, they actually have a two or three page printout in the yearbook. A lot of the students from that graduating class of 68 that went down to the fair since that was the, the big thing here you know, in town at that time. And um, that's pretty much it I have ready for sure. If I can encourage anybody, if you're ever in San Antonio, look up Chris and he'll give you a fantastic tour of the tour grounds. My wife and I really enjoyed when we went down and uh, met with him. And, you know, you can walk around with a map. It's one thing. But, you know, you, again, as we know from walking around the fairs we all go to, somebody can actually explain what the buildings were and how mm -hmm. they did it all. So uh, Chris is super fan of knowledge. Thanks, Chris. Who else do we have? Oh, okay. Uh, what are you waving there? Oh, World's Fair flag. Okay, go ahead, Greg. You have to unmute yourself. Hey, Bill. Hey, Greg. Bill, it's Albert. Oh, okay. Uh, Greg was uh, trying to say something. We'll get back to you in a second, Albert. Greg, you're muted. Greg, you're you're, you're muted. Greg. Greg is trying to figure out how to unmute. Bill, Bill, yes. just for one. Yeah, go ahead, Albert. One second, Bill. Uh, just for the, uh, yeah, for the people that are NASA fans and all, the uh, just wanted to give you an alert. The SpaceX launch is 25 minutes away, and it looks like a full go. Oh, okay. The last I saw was a uh, potential weather hold. Thanks for the update. Yeah, it's looking a lot better now, so we're, you know, can't come out too much longer, Bill. We'll start no, revolting. No. <laughs> okay, now Greg, are you talking? No, nope, Greg is still. Do Greg is doing his impression of Marcel Marceau. Marceau. <laughs> Greg, you can keep working at it, but we're uh, we're seeing you, but we're not hearing you. So uh, next next month, you can pay for the premium package with sound. <laughs> By the way, next week we're going to be doing uh, the 1984 World's Fair. Uh, Mark Sumner had to drop off, but uh, that was the uh, last World's Fair held in the United States, the Louisiana World Exposition from New Orleans. So uh, not well known to a lot of people. It was a, a very nice small fair, but uh, you know has the, uh, the stigma of being the last one here in the U.S., uh let's see anybody else jason your hand still shows us up did you need anything else no uh i thought i went down automatically but i can take care of it. oh we can put it down there we go no problem so anybody else uh, before everybody wants to go watch the oh okay william okay i see you waving there with a neat vatican sign behind you and then we'll get to you kim so william you're muted yeah I'm there really you go. Excited excited about you doing the, the 84 World's Fair. I actually uh, uh, worked there pre-opening, helped uh, doing some uh, cash modeling. So I set up a, a software spreadsheet uh, modeling package to manage their cash flow and do the projections for them. So I set that up and I think it was like late 82 or 83 uh, when I got it all set up and set up for them to run during the fair. So I always like to think that while it was uh, a disaster financially, that they knew that was coming because they had my, my spreadsheet. Uh, <laughs> so they had the fair. Up. Huh? Unfortunately, I, I don't have a copy of it. And even if I did have a copy, it was probably one, two, three, or Visicalc. And it's, it, you can't get this up now. And it's up. Great, thanks. Just so you know, your audio is breaking up a lot. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no I'll problem. Try to speak. I'll try to speak for that. I have just uh, quickly, I went to the fair. I'm from Houston, Texas. So I went to the fair in 65, came back with uh, two souvenirs. I had my Ford pen from Texas um, and 
the map, uh, souvenir map. And that was always a thrill to me. I kept those with me forever. And then and introduced me to the, uh, buying uh, all the crazy things that you can buy. So I have more than a small storage room filled with things now that's uh, sort of embarrassing how many things I have of all sorts of things. But, but the one unique thing that I keep in my office is actually I set up as my behind here. So this is actually the dedication plaque from the, uh, the Vatican Pavilion. Uh, there and it's a, a substantial metal plaque that I presume was on the side of the building. I haven't been able to find a picture of it actually in place. Um, but I picked this up in a uh, in a separate auction somehow that we that it just came up on. Uh, anyway, just sort of a fascinating thing. Sort of has a piece of the fair that I can reach out and actually touch. I think I may have a picture of that uh, near the entranceway. So remind me after this, and I'll search for you. Okay. Anyway, that's uh, that's my presentation there. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Kim. So much. Hi, everyone. Um, I am getting ready for the rocket launch myself, so I promise this will be fast. <laughs> Um, I have a couple of items from both my grandparents and my father. Um, my dad had worked at the Florida Pavilion. He was uh, also working for Bell and the Florida Pavilion in 1964. So I have a couple of items from him and then a couple of items from my grandparents. Uh, this item, since nobody's shown it yet, that I chose to uh, come on. I'm going to try and do the flashlight trick. Um, hmm, I don't know. How do I do this? I guess I can't actually, I'm sorry. I realized that I'm on, uh, how do I switch this around? Let's see if I can do it. It's a flattened penny. Yeah, elongated penny. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's from 39, so it has the Trilon and Perisphere on it. Um, and the, the uh, head of Lincoln is not super visible, but it's there. Uh, but on the front is yeah. so that's the first item that's from my grandparents and then I had uh, done pictures that I had posted on the Facebook page before but this was my dad got this I don't know how um, but again it's a phone thing I think it was Mitch before had shown his that was the mailbox thing this is actually a phone and it's I guess it's backwards, but it has the dialing information. So it's the, the map of the fair. So again, I don't know how he got it, but uh, he had it. And we were told just a couple of weeks when I was, um, I've only recently been getting into the fair uh, and learning from my parents that they went and my mom had a pen pal. Um, so he told me to go upstairs in the attic. We, we now live in Pennsylvania. And he said, I know exactly where it is, go up and get it. So I got it. And uh, it was actually on our garage wall my entire uh, teenage years growing up until we moved to Pennsylvania. And I had no idea what it was. <clears throat> so now I have it <laughs> and I know what it is. So I have. Great, thank you. I know we're running out of time as uh, people want to go look at the rocket, but Wayne has his hand up. Wayne, you're muted. I, uh, I attended the 64 Fair as a starving college student, so all my souvenirs had to be collected years later on eBay. But, uh, for example, here's the uh, Kodak World's Fair camera. Can you, uh, can you see this? Yep. Yeah. And unfortunately, they made the top very secure, so practically all of them have been ripped off like this. I've only seen a couple of uh, mint condition ones. And this is the camera itself. Now, being an engineer, I was not uh, willing to just put this on the shelf. I had to try it to see if it worked. And in 2014, I discovered Blue Moon Camera, who rewound 
film in the right size. Kodak had uh, discontinued film size for the World's Fair camera, but Blue Moon, uh, for 28 bucks, you could get a roll of film and the prints. And, uh, so I uh, unfortunately couldn't get to uh, Flushing Meadows, but I took pictures around the house like uh, the lilies of the mailbox. And what size film is that, 127? 127, I think. Right. That was one of the very first uh, collectibles that I bought when I started getting into it. Uh, I've got the camera and the my lid is still on my box. Uh, now here's another thing. You may have seen a lot of cheap plastic slide viewers, but I spotted this on eBay. It's actually a Kodak plastic slide viewer. Unfortunately, the slides are gone, but it uh, appears that it was a uh, premium rather than a uh, sold item. And, uh, in terms of not uh, leaving things as I find them, uh, one of Bill Cotter's picture CDs is full of stereo uh, pictures. So I made a template in Photoshop so I could print out stereo cards and a inexpensive viewer found that line. And I now have this collection of stereo views that uh, sits on the night table in my guest bedroom. I've got lots more um, 3D I'll have to get to you. Yeah. By the way, there's just giving another update on the weather. They said it's 70% chance they're still uh, down to the wire on the weather prediction. Okay. Uh, one last thing I need to share my screen. You should be seeing a picture of the Seven Up sandwich plates, and uh, I also have these on display in the guest bedroom. Um, the thing that I found out after I put them up was that the blue ink on these plates was very uh, light sensitive. So on the left, the blue plate has faded to a pale gray. And at the bottom, the green one has faded to yellow. Oh, wow. So I have a spare blue one in a box that I only that. take out every couple of years to gaze at. Uh, but anyhow, that's uh, the things I wanted to show today. Super. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate it. And do we have anybody else waving hands? Oh, War B. Warner, okay. Hi there. The fair that I attended was the 64 World's Fair, which was loads of fun, of course, but I actually have memories of the 39 World's Fair because my parents went to that. And every so often when we were driving down an interstate, they would remark, that this reminded them of the Futurama and the uh, Trilon and Perisphere exhibit from the 39 World's Fair. So I have a book, if people are interested in that sort of thing, Norman Bel Geddes Designs America. And it includes the work that he did for the World's Fair and a lot of other uh, things that he did. And of course, I also have books by Bill Cotter. You might find somebody in this group who would know about where you could get books by Bill Cotter about the World's Fair. And that's what I have to say. Thanks so much for organizing these things. They are loads of fun. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for buying the books. Uh, nice to get some of them out of the guest room. Uh, hang on, let's just see anybody else w waving. Yeah, I guess we're all just about time for the uh, the rocket launch. As again mentioned, next week we're going to be uh, talking the uh, eighty four World's Fair. 
Uh, then we're uh, going to look, be looking at the 33 World's Fair, uh, a couple others coming up. So if you go to worldsfairphotos.com slash Zoom, I put up the schedule for the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I am not at all adverse to going back into dealing into, uh, you know, say it's the 64 fair. Maybe we spend a week just the transportation uh, area in, in depth or, or something else. Or if there's more stuff, we could go back to Mitch's house and spend another hour. Y you guys can't believe how much Mitch, Alan, some of these guys have. I'm glad I just collect paper. So I'm not, uh, you know, in competition with these guys. We were talking the other day. And I have a road sign that I got from John Pender and, uh, you know, Avenue of Commerce. And it's just, oh, I've got one of those and one of these and one of those. And he's got, he could outdo the whole road map for the, the fair again. So we well, appreciate everybody joining us. And uh, 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 we had a, a good number. We were up to 43 other people with the similar interest of collecting stuff. And I'm glad we got to see Joey's bricks and, uh, you know, uh, other people's stuff. And someday we'll find out what Greg Abbott was trying to tell us. So... <laughs> Oh, wow. you, we, we heard, I think we heard Greg that time. Did you say something, Greg? No, he's still uh, the man <laughs> of mystery. <laughs> so thanks all. Uh, let's go watch the rocket launch. Keep our fingers crossed there, and we'll uh, see some of you again next week for 1984. You, all right, thank you all. Bye.